Um, is Pavel the guy from Joe Rogan? Pavel is the guy from Joe Rogan. The next thing we're going to cover is the swing. Um, so I see a lot of people swing um, and a lot of the time the movements that they're doing aren't necessarily getting the out them the outcomes that they're looking for. Um, the swing is a really dynamic hip movement where the weight that's in your hand should be, you're trying to stop it from projecting away from you rather than pulling up on it. If your shoulders are tired, if the top of your, your arm is tired after you've done a swing, you're doing it wrong. All right, the bell is weightless at the top. So in order to, to facilitate um, people doing great swings, we're actually going to go through, you know, a few different steps and we're going to build that hinge from the base up and that's going to make it so that when you get to the swing, you just have to get your brain out of the way so that you can, can do it well. All right, so the first movement that we're going to do is I'm going to start kneeling. So, and I might tuck my toes under and maybe go to, to just around hip width. From here, I'm going to, to place my hands, actually, let's start at the top position. So I'm here at the top and I'm gonna run my hands down my legs and then run them into the floor and it's easier with my toes back. All right, and I'm locking my hips up, my abs are tight and my shoulders are down. So if you put your hands down beside you, lift your fingers up and then push your heels, the heels of your hands into the ground. That's what your shoulders should feel like when you swing. All right, and I'm gonna push my hips back, run the heels down and touch them on the ground. All right, my eyes are on the horizon and you should see that as I do this movement, my, the, my lumbar curve stays pretty similar. So this part of my back looks the same from the start all the way down to the, to the finish. And if you imagine, um, if you've seen uh, some of the Marvel movies, Iron Man has this big um, power cube. You're jiu jitsu nerds, you'll know the name for it. Um, and so from here, you want that to end up pointing at about 45. So I'm going to push my hips back, and you can see that in this position, my weight's on, it's sort of shared between my knees and my hips, and I'm projecting that there but my eyes are still looking forward. Not my chin, but my eyes. And so that's your basic hinge. You push your hips back and then lock up. Okay, tight glutes. Um, a coach of mine from, uh, from South Africa tells you to imagine that you've got a really nice sandwich, all right, and you want to take a bite, all right? So you're biting out of your sandwich with the top of your cheeks in that top position and you'll feel a stretch through the front of your hips. And you're going to push your hips back and then lock them up. So getting good at that movement without your, your feet and taking those, those joints out of it is going to give you a running start so that when you get to swing, you're not doing something stupid. Uh, the next position that we're going to go through is the same thing, but we're going to do it from standing. All right, so I'm here in this position and again, my glutes are tight, my abs are tight, my quads are tight, and I've got that same feeling of pushing the heel of my hand to the ground. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push my hips back. And again, it's that same sort of feeling. I can run my hands down my legs from here, and that's gonna give me that sense of, of the hinge. So as I do it, you can see that my hips have gone back my knees have come forward slightly, and if you look at the angle of my, my femur versus the angle of my torso, they're roughly mirroring each other, all right? My knees, which you can't see as well because of these pants, but my knees have come only a tiny bit forward, and it's so that the weight can be balanced through my foot. So in this position, I should be loaded like a bow. If you imagine that, that, uh, that someone's stretching a bow string, my tail should be in the center of the bowstring and ready to project force forward. And I'm gonna stand up and lock everything down. If you can get this movement nailed down, you're gonna find that swings are really easy. All right, it becomes just doing that movement dynamically. Now my feet for this movement, uh, an easy way of finding 
roughly where you want to be for your swing. Start with your feet together, pivot to 90 degrees. So pivot your heel out to 90, pivot on your toe out to 90. Same, so it ends up being just slightly wider than hip width. And then just rock back on your heels and you'll feel your feet splay out just a little. All right, and I'll show you that same position that we were in a second ago. I'm going to drive my, the heels of my hands down, run my heels along my thighs and find the hinge, okay? And I'm locking tall each time. Now, once you've got that feeling, we're gonna add a little bit of dynamism to it. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but now I'm going to, to chop through my hips and I'm going to lock into, into that, this standing position. If you've got someone with you who can look at you and make sure that your the chop and pop or the chop, chop and lock looks similar to, to the hinge you were doing just before, that you've still got those same angles, you're gonna find that it's really helpful. So it's this, like I'm, if you imagined um, that you're throwing something a long way or that you're broad jumping, it's this snap, I'm launching. There's a lot of force going from my hips through the wall in front of me. I'm not hyperextending in either direction. I'm here and then I'm locking super tall and projecting force forward. Um, so the reason I like chop and lock is it stops people from doing this silly rocking stuff. Once you've got a handle on all those drills, um, there's some benefit to loading the same movement, the same hinge with a, with a deadlift. Um, and we'll briefly look at that. We'll briefly look at the, the two, or the, the double bell deadlift as well as the single bell deadlift, um, or the one arm deadlift as well as the, the double bell deadlift. But ultimately this hinge is your swing. The next movement we're gonna look at is the deadlift. So we've covered the hinge in a variety of different ways and the deadlift is just a nice way of loading that. All right, the key difference to note with the deadlift versus the swing is with the deadlift, I'm gonna grip the bells pretty tightly. With a swing, my fingers are just hooks. All right, so this is a drill towards the swing. Don't get caught up in the fact that I'm, I'm emphasizing the grip at this point. All right, so I'm gonna have that same hinge that I had and my hands are gonna come down. Now, if, if I find that my hands can't reach with the hinge, leaning forward and doing that is a bad plan. I wanna hinge and I wanna keep hinging until I can reach the bell. If for some reason I can't hinge deeply enough, you may find that hinging, just putting your knees forward a little bit and then resetting it is gonna be a better option than, uh, than doing this sort of fold over. If I show you, and now, You'll notice that I'm, um, actually I'll probably be better off doing it this way, here. Yeah. Um, you'll notice that I'm, uh, I'm obscuring the bells with my heels, all right? The, the kettlebells between my legs aren't obvious. And so when you do deadlifts, the bells shouldn't be obvious. They should be hidden by your legs. Uh, if someone's looking at you, from, at you from the side, because that's gonna be where you've got the base of support. So as I hinge, my arms are long, the bells are beside my ankles, and I'm gonna drive all the way up into that locking position, all right, just like the swing. Glutes are tight, quads are tight, abs are tight. Push my butt back, and they're, they're resting again between my legs. Why is this different to a bar? Because if you try to do the same thing with a bar, you would do massive trauma to your shins as you try to get it back between your ankles. When you do a deadlift, you get the bar as close as you can because that's as good as we can get for, for that same level of stability. All right, this also allows us to, to learn how to turn our lats on properly. I'll show you the same thing from here. My arms are super long. I'm hinging down, all right, locking onto the bells. And in this position, as I lock onto the bells, I'm making sure that my chest stays proud, but my shoulders stay down. And I drive up, shoulders are still down, all right? And then hinge back down, all right? So that's how you load that hinge. But if people are gonna be doing one arm swings and snatches, it's also handy to have uh, access to the one arm uh, deadlift. And that's gonna, I'm leaving the bells here so that you can see it, so that you can see it as I hinge down, I'm gonna mimic that movement 
So I'm not letting my body spin around um, as I do it um, because that's not going to be particularly good for me. I'm hinging down, staying square and locking back up. And you'll find that once you come to your ballistic movements, having control of this particular pattern is going to do wonderful things for you. We've gone through four or five different hinges. In each different hinge, you'll find that it's the same movement as the swing. It's this pushing the butt back, sending it back as far as you can, and then locking it out. If you're still struggling with it, here's something that I worked with with someone just the other day that seemed to help them out. And it helps because it both establishes where your chest should be and teaches you that you're reaching your hips back and, uh, and slightly down. So if you imagine that there's something, you know, about two meters behind me, I'm gonna interlock my fingers and reach them down as far as I can. And then I'm gonna push my butt back towards that spot two meters behind me. You can see that the angle of my, my hips and my shoulders creates about 90 degrees, all right? And then I lock back up. So this is my swing. Now positioning for the swing, you wanna have the bell. Um, start off, again, we're gonna do the same drill that we did earlier. Toes touching the bell. Bring your heel out to 90, your toe out to 90. All right, just rock back. So now I'm in this position. Um, annoyingly, the crack's there. Now, it's not just because I'm anal retentive. Having the crack directly underneath my feet is going to um, impact on my brain's ability to produce force through that space. So I'm just gonna shift back a little so that once I'm ready to swing, I'm not, um, not dealing with anything funky. All right, so I've gone through that same process again to set up my feet. And from here, I'm gonna hinge down. And so the bell's in front of me. Why is the bell in front of me? It's so that when I take the bell, I'm gonna use my lats and throw it behind me. And that launching back is actually gonna preload my hips so that the snap is gonna be stronger. So from here, feet planted, I'm gonna send the bell back. All right, so I'm driving with my hips and you can hear my breath. If you imagine a hydraulic, and we'll do this with the chop and pop, a hydraulic, but the inhalation and the exhalation are timed with my hips. And what that does is it further reinforces the stability of your spine and helps you to produce uh, power. Um, karate guys would call it a kime. It's the, you know, that you hear them go, Hyah! it's this same idea that you produce more force and speed um, when you're able to use your breath and your, your compression internally to, to uh, facilitate it. So we're doing the same thing. I'm gonna inhale, which compresses it, and I'm gonna exhale in a way that compresses it. And my lungs are always gonna be at least 70% full. So I'm here, I hinge down. Okay, and that's, that's plenty of force going, going in that direction. One thing that you may or may not have noticed is that as I swing, I snap my hips, and then on the way down, the bell comes all the way back, and my elbows weld onto my frame, and then I hinge, all right? If I hinge out here, it's gonna create uh, an unpleasant load on my lower back. So I get it to there, and then the load goes straight into my glutes and my hamstrings, which are a lot better suited to, to carrying load than your lower back. Um, so my suggestion would be, practice the preceding movements. You're gonna want a bunch of the, the kneeling hinges, a bunch of the standing hinges, the chop and pops, the deadlifts, and then finally when you get to the swing, I would litter whichever one of those other movements um, felt really good or taught you the most in amongst the swings. Maybe five chop and pops and then five swings. And five swings will look like this. I'm gonna hinge down, following that same hinge, reach in a way that I don't uh, destroy the um, posture in my upper body. And then from there, I'm gonna connect to the ground and wait for the bell. So the bell's close and then I snap. Okay. The last thing that might help you with this is this bottom position is not relaxed. It's uh, we have two really strong positions in the swing. We've got this position and this position. We wanna spend as much time as possible in each of them. 
In this position, I'm reaching my arms as far back as I can, welded to my body, and I'm sending my chest all the way back in the other direction. So I'm sending my chest forward as far as I can, and my shoulders back as far as I can. And then from there, I explode my hips into a lock, and the bell floats up. Play with that. Um, but what you'll find is as you get good at the hinge, the getting the dynamic swing where the bell is weightless becomes a lot easier. I'm gonna do three more swings and I want you just to focus on how little effort is going into my arms as I do it. Have a play with that and once you're good at the two hand swing and you'll be able to shift to the one arm swing pretty quickly. It's gonna improve your dynamism, it's gonna improve your conditioning, and it's, it's going to have a great impact on your ability to transmit force from hip to shoulder, which for rolling and throwing, it's wonderful.